I'm now on Battlefield 5 and I'm going to talk about the responsiveness of the monitor. This monitor has 165Hz refresh rate, I've got the game running at 165 frames a second, pretty solidly. So this high frame rate, high refresh rate combination gives you a few key advantages. One is that it greatly improves the connected feel, that's the precision and fluidity you feel when you're interacting with your character, interacting with the game world. That's also aided by low input lag. In this case, I measured around one and a half milliseconds of input lag, so really impressively low. That indicates a very low signal delay, an extremely low signal delay. That's the main element of input lag you feel. So it's really nice to see such a low level of input lag here. The other thing that relatively high frame rate and refresh rate combination does for you, it reduces the perceived blur due to eye movement from the monitor. So perceived blur, that is an important concept and it's explored more in an article on the website all about monitor responsiveness. And there's a bit of a summary in the written review in the responsiveness section if you're not familiar with this. Definitely worth checking that out. But most of the perceived blur you see on a monitor is due to the eye movement and it's tightly linked to the refresh rate. The other aspect of perceived blur, which is also important consideration, comes from the pixel responses of the monitor. And you can use a photography technique, which I like to use, called Pursuit Photography, using Test UFO or the UFO Motion Test for Ghosting. And that demonstrates both aspects of perceived blur very nicely. So I'm going to show you some Pursuit photographs on the screen. The monitor's running at 165Hz, its maximum supported refresh rate here. There are examples in the written review from various other lower refresh rates, if you're interested in that. And I've tested all the different overdrive settings as off, weak, medium and strong. I've also included a reference screen, the Gigabyte M27Q, that's running at 170Hz, but this makes a negligible difference versus 165Hz, so it's a good comparison here. It's also a good reference screen because it isn't the fastest IPS model out there, it's not the slowest either, but it's at a comfortable level, a level which most people are very happy with in terms of its responsiveness. So if a monitor can match or come close to that, it's good. If it can provide a better performance, then that's going to be very welcome, and most people are going to be very happy with that. So. The AOC here, I like to use the overdrive set to medium, that's the optimal setting in my view for 165Hz, but people might have their own preferences. You can see the strong setting it does give some more noticeable overshoot, some halo trading that's bright and can be seen behind the UFOs. I wouldn't say this is the most extreme overshoot I've seen, it certainly isn't the most extreme overshoot I've seen, especially using the fastest overdrive setting on a monitor, so some people might find this okay, especially for competitive gaming with simple graphics. I prefer medium though, it gives a nicer balance for me. And with this you can see just a little bit of light powdery trailing behind the UFOs, but actually less than you can see with the M27Q, so it's a really good level you can see here, really good level of responsiveness. Consider a broader range of transitions, you can see some more differences between the weak and medium setting than perhaps is highlighted here, although if you look at the middle row, that's the medium background, compare weak to medium, you can actually see a bit more of a bold initial trail for the weak setting which does indicate slower pixel responses but overall i don't find the overshoot obnoxious with the medium setting i do find a bit of a reduction in perceived blur in places for some transitions which i do like so sticking with my preferred medium setting what that means in practice is that the monitor provides a very confident pixel response performance the weaknesses are on the minor side much as shown with test ufo the greatest weaknesses will occur where there are bright shades against a contrasting background. So if you can see white text in a game and bright or saturated, highly saturated, it doesn't have to be bright, it can be white or highly saturated HUD elements, for example, or markers against a darker background, that's when you might notice some of this a bit more. And you do just get it in places where there are just mixtures of brighter and darker shade, but it's not like a smeary trail or anything like that. It's not even what I describe as a heavy powdery trail. It's faint, it sticks close to the object, nothing really stands out when you're just using the monitor normally, and it only adds a little bit to perceived blur rather than a huge amount. Some overshoot is a bit more noticeable in, for some transitions and shown with test UFO using my preferred medium setting, but none of it is strong overshoot, nothing, nothing that really stands out and slaps me in the face. When I'm not really actively looking for it and I'm just playing the game normally, I don't really find it bothersome. I'm on a different scene on Battlefield 5 now, and I'm going to talk about responsiveness using some slightly different transitions. So the scene I was showing you before was mainly brighter to medium transition with a few darker shades mixed in. This has more of a focus now, this scene, on darker shades with contrasting backgrounds. So yes, there are some of the more noticeable weaknesses I mentioned before, but when I say noticeable, they're still on the minor side. And it's really the overshoot, to be honest, is, is the main sort of thing that 
could stand out if you're sensitive to it, but for these transitions, which really show some of the strongest overshoot you'll observe on this monitor, there's nothing that really jumps out in an obvious way. You probably can't even see it on the video, in fact. Just a little bit of light halo trading. It's a little bit brighter than the background shade around the flag, for example, so it could potentially stand out if you're sensitive to it, but it's certainly not a major issue in this case. And yes, you know, just a little bit of a mask of perceived blur from slightly slower than optimal pixel transitions in some cases, but nothing dramatic at all. The monitor also supports VRR variable refresh rate, specifically adaptive sync. You can use AMD FreeSync. AOC claims it should be AMD FreeSync Premium certified at some point. I'm not sure, but the certification, I wouldn't stress too much about it. It won't actually affect the performance, which I have tested in some detail myself. I've also used NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible mode. So you can use AMD FreeSync via DisplayPort or HDMI. G-Sync compatible mode on this one, DisplayPort only. I'm using an RTX 3090 at the moment. And what this does for you is it gets rid of tearing and stuttering from frame and refresh rate mismatches. So it tries to keep the refresh rate of the monitor synchronized with the frame rate of the content. So I've now got the game running at 120 frames a second, so I can talk about this a little more, because something you have to be aware of is an increase in overshoot, especially if you're using the medium setting or indeed the strong setting for overdrive. It can be that you can notice quite a bit of overshoot as the refresh rate decreases. At this level, I'm sort of borderline between thinking that maybe I should use the weak setting instead to cut down on the overshoot. My general recommendation though definitely would be if you're in the double digits, I'm not quite there yet, but if you dip frequently into the double digits, or let's just say you go much below 120 hertz quite a lot of the time, you might want to just stick to the weak setting. So I'm just going to switch over to that now. So that does cut down on the overshoot a lot, adds a little bit of extra powdery trailing in places, but like I showed with Test UFO, it still performs well, to be honest. So it might be that you just like to use this setting anyway if you find that you're playing a wide variety of games or lots of different scenes in your games and your, your frame rate's all over the place. Just stick to weak. Just, just give it a go. It might be quite nice for you. And the pixel response requirements for optimal performance do reduce as your refresh rate decreases. So I've got the game running at 80 frames a second now and the monitor is running at 80 hertz. And I'm using the weak setting. To be honest, this provides really a nice performance here. I could bump up to medium, I'm just going to do that, bump up to the medium setting just to show you the overshoot. So what I find now is that overshoot is pretty strong, you'll hopefully be able to see this around the tree and the flag post on the video. Some dirty trailing which is darker than the background shade, actually close to black around the street lamp there. So for me, this overshoot outweighs any benefit I get in reduction perceived blur because that is really very slight at this point, whereas the overshoot is pretty eye-catching. So the weak setting is definitely my preference now. And now running at 60 hertz, the overshoot is even stronger around the makeshift roof there, the flag and the tree, and of course that lovely dirty trailing. And when the monitor goes below 55 hertz or so, 55 frames a second in your game, you've got VRR active, LFC, low frame rate compensation, is used, so that's what AMD refers to it, and NVIDIA has a very similar technology. And what this does is it ensures that the refresh rate of the monitor sticks to a multiple of the frame rate. So if your game is running at 40 frames a second, for example, the monitor could be running at 80 hertz, keeps the tearing and stuttering at bay. There's a slight momentary stuttering when the LFC boundary is crossed in either direction, but that's not specific to this monitor. It's something which you will always observe with adaptive sync. So it basically extends the effective range of operation. It could potentially be a problem if you're frequently passing the boundary because of this momentary stuttering and also the changes in overshoot behavior because you could suddenly be going from 55 hertz to 80 hertz plus so there would be a change in overshoot a reduction in overshoot or an increase if you go in the other direction if that makes sense so i suppose it could be a bit jarring but for most people you're not really going to be frequently passing this boundary you're going to be just one side or the other hopefully above it most of the time and yes, the claimed floor operation for this monitor is 48 hertz, I'm aware of that, but in my testing it with AMD and NVIDIA, the technology worked in much the same way on both my AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, it seemed to be more like 55 hertz, or just a little bit below that, that the floor operation was, then it switched to LFC. The monitor also has a strobe backlight setting called MBR, motion blur reduction. You can't use that at the same time as VRR, but you can use it instead. That is something which is not good to explore in a video. All you can see is weird flickering. You can't see the advantages, but 
it is explored in some detail in the written review in terms of its brightness, in terms of what it actually does, in terms of pursuit photography and the subjective impressions I give there. Definitely worth checking that out if you're interested in strobe backlight modes. And just to summarise though, the strobe backlight setting on this monitor is quite good because it's flexible in terms of its brightness and other settings on the monitor that you can configure. And it's just quite well tuned actually. It doesn't give a huge amount of strobe crosstalk or massive amount of overshoot. It's not perfect because there is a bit of both of those things, but really for the main central region of the screen, which is where you're focusing on mainly when you're gaming competitively, it's going to give you a pretty good performance actually. And if you like strobe backlight modes, it reduces the perceived blur, then this is a pretty decent strobe backlight mode, all things considered.